Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. Nora's on assignment. I'm Margaret Brennan. We're going to begin tonight at the White House, where the president is accusing the country's leading infectious disease expert of, quote, playing all sides of the equation about reopening the economy. President Trump's rare rebuke of Dr. Anthony Fauci comes after the country's top public health leaders told Congress they are concerned about a spike in infections if states loosen restrictions too quickly. Today, we learned cases are spiking in about half of the country, even as more states move to reopen beaches and businesses. As we come on the air tonight, nearly 84,000 people have died from COVID-19 in the U.S., and confirmed cases nationwide are moving closer to 1.4 million. Tonight, there's also a stark new warning from the head of the Federal Reserve. Jerome Powell, the country's central banker, says the U.S. economy could face lasting damage if Congress doesn't pass additional stimulus. There's a lot to get to tonight, and our team of correspondents is covering it all. CBS's Paula Reed leads off our coverage from the White House. Paula? Margaret, Chairman Powell also said that the speed and the scope of this downturn is without modern precedent and significantly worse than any recession since World War II. And President Trump continues to push to get America back to work, even over objections from his own medical experts. President Trump's push to reopen the country has repeatedly been questioned by his own health experts, and tonight he pushed no, uh, back. We're opening our country. People want it open. The schools are going to be open. The president took issue with Dr. Anthony Fauci's warning Tuesday that there could be a resurgence of the virus and schools could be in danger. Look, he wants to play all sides of the equation. I was surprised by his answer, actually. Meanwhile, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell warned of permanent damage to the economy if Congress doesn't pass additional stimulus. The scope and speed of this downturn are without modern precedent, significantly worse than any recession since World War II. The president wants businesses to reopen and shoppers back in stores to boost the economy and help his chances of re-election. But top health experts on Capitol Hill said the testing necessary to achieve that safely is currently insufficient. The U.S. needs more than 900,000 tests every day to safely open up again. We're doing about a third of that. The White House relies on the Abbott Quick Test for its staff. A new study out today showed that it missed 48% of positives, though Abbott disputed that finding. The heads of the CDC and FDA, who were exposed last week to a positive staffer, were pulled out of quarantine today for an in-person task force meeting with the vice president, who was seen wearing a mask when he arrived to work. With the death count over 83,000, CBS News has learned that President Trump has expressed skepticism about that figure, but his top medical expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, said deaths are likely undercounted. The number is likely higher. I, I don't know exactly what percent's right. higher, but almost certainly it's higher. Tomorrow on Capitol Hill, Rick Bright, the administration's former top vaccine researcher who is pushed out of his position, will testify that if the response is not ramped up, 2020 will be the darkest winter in modern history. Paula, wow. Um, I want to also ask you about what the acting director of national intelligence did today when he released a list of officials who asked to know the identity of Michael Flynn, then incoming national security advisor, when his name appeared in classified reports back in 2016. What is the significance? Well, Margaret, unmasking is when a senior government official requests to know the identity of a U.S. citizen in an intelligence report. It's something that happens thousands of times a year. Now, on this list of approximately three dozen officials is vice, former Vice President Joe Biden. And administration officials here at the Trump White House, they're suggesting that Flynn was targeted in an effort to undermine President Trump. But Democrats have pushed back on this and insisted that, in fact, this list illustrates how widespread the concern was about Flynn's activities and that all the appropriate laws were followed. Six months from the election. Paula Reed, thank you.